low back pain and disc herniation. The spine is made of bony vertebrae that are separated by discs. The spine also has nerve and neural structures. Here you can find the spinal cord that ends at the level of T12 L1, the conus medullaris, which is the lower end of the spinal cord, and you can also find the coda equina, which is a lot of nerve roots beginning at the level of L1. Different conditions of the lumbar spine, including disc herniation, are the main cause of low back pain. The lumbar spine, which is the lower back, consists of five vertebrae and they are numbered from L1 to L5. These vertebrae are attached to the sacrum, we call it the tailbone, at the lower end of the spine. The discs between the vertebrae are cushioning pads which absorb the shock. In a normal disc, there are two layers. The inner disc layer, it is a soft gelatinous tissue, and we call that the nucleus bulbosus. And an outer strong thick layer, and we call it the annulus fibrosus. Here is the picture of the disc with its two components, the nucleus pulposus and the annulus fibrosus. A tear in the annulus fibrosus, as you can see here, will lead to prolapse herniation or escape of the nucleus pulposus out from the disc. As it herniates, it could affect the spinal nerve root that lies behind it, as you can see here. Behind the disc lies the spinal nerve root and the coda equina. In about 95% of all disc herniation cases, the L4, L5 or L5, S1 disc levels are involved. A typical herniation of L4, L5 disc will affect the L5 nerve root, and we call that the traversing nerve root as it traverses across that disc. Herniation of the L5 S1 disc will typically affect the S1 nerve root. Types of disc herniation. There are three types of disc herniation. Number one, protrusion or bulge. This is a small bulge of the disc with intact annular and posterior longitudinal ligament fibers. This type is a simple type and usually it does not require surgery. The second type is disc herniation. In this type, there is disruption of the annular fibers, partially or totally, with a tail of disc material extending into the disc space. If the disc herniation causing pain is severe and significant, and the patient condition is not improved with conservative treatment that will include therapy, medications, and muscle relaxant, after a reasonable period of time and the pain is shooting into the back of the leg of the patient, then surgery should be considered. The third type is called sequestered disc, a free fragment without tail extending into the disc space. The fragment may be reabsorbed spontaneously. What are the locations of disc herniation? There is one typical location of disc herniation and two locations that are not typical. The typical location of disc herniation is usually posterolateral. It is the usual location, most commonly involve one nerve root, the lower one. 
For example, the L4, L5 posterolateral disc herniation will involve the L5 nerve root and the L5 S1 posterolateral disc herniation will involve the S1 nerve root. The two that are uncommon and not typical locations are foraminal and the central disc herniations. The foraminal occurs in about 8 to 10% of the cases. It involves the exiting nerve root. For example, the L4, L5 foraminal disc herniation will involve the L4 nerve root. L5, S1 foraminal disc herniation will involve the L5 nerve root. Central disc herniation. That's not a typical location of disc herniation. It involves multiple nerve roots. People don't expect it to happen. They don't think about it. It predominantly causes low back pain more than leg pain. It may cause incontinence of the bladder and bowel. Urgent diagnosis of the problem with urgent surgical treatment should be done. Early diagnosis and surgical treatment will improve the outcome of recovery for the patient. How about discogenic back pain? Discogenic back pain is an internal disc disruption, an early disc degeneration, pain worsen with flexion and sitting, and the pain is slightly better with extension. The forward flexion will be limited on examination of the patient, and there is no radicular symptoms. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.